Well, let me tell you, what a series of days trying to get out and detect. I went out to the potash field one day. We have new occupants. And then the next day it rained. And then the next day it rained. Exactly, the next day it rained. It's still raining. Today's freezing, but it's not raining, so we're gonna hit the woods, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. Here is what we are doing today. I'm going back to the cellar hole that waited. If you guys all remember, this is the site. I got caught in the rain. I just went back recently and did a recap, which was very good. Today I'm going back for a three cap. In the stealth digger world, that means, you know, third time trip at this site. But we're gonna do a little different today. Well, as you all know, I've made a lot of videos. Uh, past the 400 published videos recently. And you know, it's not like they're just regular videos. They're all edited and it's, it's quite a bit of work. But the point I'm getting at is, or going to get at, as I watch the footage, in particular of what I've been doing on Not Thursdays, I like how it's relaxed. I like, I like how it has room to breathe. And in particular, when I'm out doing something like this, I like the ambiance of the woods. The edits aren't so tight, and there's just more space in between. Not only do I like sharing the trip with all of you, I like watching it myself. That's a, that's a huge thing. If you can sit through your own video, then you know you're making something interesting but i also like saving all these memories and you know someday when i go back to watch them i'm gonna want to see more footage than just straight up edit 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 to make things run smooth but today we're relaxing a bit and we're gonna let the footage breathe so here we go we have one mile and a quarter hike out to the site so we best get moving so there's a couple sections up here I really need to navigate around because it's always been wet and with this nor'easter that just hit us, it's gonna be soaked. And essentially with a nor'easter in New England, uh, it comes up, slaps you around one way and then loops back around and gets you going the other way. It's like getting hit by a truck and having it turn around and come back at you. So. There's a lot of moisture out here, and I definitely want to avoid that low section that I've had to go through before, but there's no cut trail out here. I'm using compass brain to get me back and forth. Yeah, the ground's just soggy. There's our wall off in the distance. That's the edge of the old farm. And for those of you, if you're just catching this episode, this is a 1700 site, abandoned sometime early 1800s. And it's been choked off by development and more drastically by swamp. There's a very narrow line that I have found to get out to this site. And this is, this is one of our big permissions. And uh, through the years we keep finding more and more sites. I'm further down than I wanted to be. I'm at the right farm, the right wall. I just uh, wanted to avoid this area. Ugh. It doesn't look bad down here, but I know it's really puddled up up there and uh, it's just under 40 degrees. So if I step in that, it's not gonna be very comfortable for the next hour or two. See all these pines? This is all fresh. This was logged Maybe about eight years ago I was in here. 
didn't find the cellar hole back then, it would have been good either before they logged it or just after. But it's thick now. Cross wall number two. Popped onto a game trail here, and it's heading in the right direction as usual. Alright, so we've landed, and again, today, we're going to let it breathe. I'm going to make you guys as much a part of this dig as possible. So let me know what you think of the footage. All right, let's turn it on. Starting right out the lip as usual. Could be a button. Mid to upper 40s. Be nice to find something today to add to the town collection, huh? But if not, that's all right. We're getting outside. We're making some video. And it is. And it is. And it was pewter. A glob of pewter. Numbers are all over the joint. There's not much room to move in here, at least on this side of the site. Folded, rolled sheet metal. That's why it was all over the place. You know, there's there's no bad targets at a site like this. Everything is old. There may be the occasional shotgun shell from hunters, but other than that, that's it. So what I just dug, yeah, it's rolled sheet metal, but it's extremely old. It's part of the history of this place. A lot of people just don't get that. It's got to be shiny, pretty, complete. Those are trophy hunters. We're relic hunters. Probably. All right. Let's swing some more. So I'm moving around the east side of the cellar hole, and you can see what I'm working in is just... It's really tight and cramped, and I just go in here and try to paint in all the spaces with my coil. That's my brush. Fill it all in around every single little branch, root, rock, whatever. Because you got to imagine, I'm roughly 10 feet from the side of where the house was. This is right up next to the house, you know? And this side has actually been really quiet compared to the other three sides. Well, the ground is just sounding and feeling different today. You get accustomed to a certain responsiveness from the mineralization and uh, the typical iron bed that you're working at a cellar hole. I've said it before in past videos about uh, ground saturation is not always a good thing, especially in mineralized soil. What happens is that reflects the RF, the radio frequency coming off your coil. In the ham radio world, that's what we call a ground plane. And there are people who put antennas 
on water, you know, like in a marshy type land, because it reflects that energy up to the sky. It's, it's the same principle here, metal detecting. So if the ground is only soaking wet an inch or two down, that's it, that RF is getting into there. If it's fully saturated, that's when you get the good conductivity. That's why early spring we always have a tough time when the, that top layer is frozen. It's shielding all the signals. I gotta keep hearing things. I just share that with, with you guys from time to time because different people pop in and out of what we call the continuum here. Big flat chunk of iron. So you guys are getting it all today. Regardless of what we find, that's not what it's about. It's just connecting me with you and all of us with the environment. It's just, this time of the year in New England is, uh, it's special, it's different. When you get between Halloween and Christmas, the woods are like no other time of the year. It's, it's hard to explain, but for those of you who live in New England, or maybe it's like this in your part of the world, there's just something about it. Salamander buddy. See, uh, an overpowering iron signal, an iron target, but something interesting. I have no idea what this is, but it's pretty cool. It's got shapes and things. That's one side. There's the other side, and it's got, it's got hinge points to it. I wonder what that one on. Let's see. That's what I love about relic hunting. You always find stuff. Because you're hunting for relics. Huh. I have no idea. If anybody has seen one of those before, let me know in the comments. It's good numbers, but it actually sounds like it's on the surface. I have no idea what's going on here, but they might be dealing with multiple targets. Let's get you in closer. That's a big nail. That's another nail. Oh boy, that's going up to 80 now. I'm wondering if it's a good target in there that those nails were just making it all weird right from the beginning. All right, now I gotta back you up. Excuse me. Sorry, I only moved you because I want to swing my coil and don't want to get too close to the camera. That's an 82, 83.
Oh, nice. I got some shards. Fuck. Ah, friggin' thorns. See, this is the crap that I usually edit out that you guys don't see me or we dealing with. It's a rock. Oh, I think we got a coin. No kidding. So those nails were right on top of it, throwing that signal all over. All right, this is exciting. Yeah, I talk about relics and brag how I'm a relic hunter. Coins are relics, but the thing about coins is they give you dates sometimes. And with this site, oh, this could be very important. Kappa. It's British, I can tell by the back already. It's King George. Again, the exciting thing about this site is we don't know who lived here or when. We just have a guesstimation on the window. Uh, I think we're gonna get a date off this. That'll be fascinating. King George the second oh man I wish I could see oh I'm gonna use that app on my phone stand by see I wasn't sure how today was gonna go and I didn't care I'm just I, I love when it happens like that the signals just you know you can't lock on to anything particular, but it's doing it for a reason. You remove some nails and sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, so let's go in and use the magnifier. Holy crap. I think that says 1730. And that would line up with our early theories of this being an early colonist not 1730 probably within 20 years after that it is it's 1730 that's the oldest King George the second coin I've dug 20 what was my oldest coin 1719 it's the oldest King George the second though awesome very very Awesome. So, this is where I was working on the westerly side of the house. Right on the lip. Right there was the coin. Right here is the corner. Literally on the corner of the house. And that was not more than three inches deep. So, I'm going to swing around here some more and give it a few more minutes. But see, there's that weird signal again. So this, this one foot by one foot square area between the nails, the coin, and whatever this is, that's sheet metal. Look at this. It's no wonder out of that hole two iron nails, one copper coin, and one brass tack. Look at this, a little upholstery tack. So iron, brass, copper, all in the same little hole. 
and this target's very small, so. Jeez. All right, well, that's it. That was a great little quick dig where, you know, I didn't set my expectations high. I just wanted to come back out here and any find would be great. But yet, I have a 1730 King George coin to add to the town museum. How's that for awesome? Well, hope you all enjoyed this video. I definitely did. And uh, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Till next time, enjoy your Not Thursday.